Hello everyone, welcome to my Mandalorian weekly review. This is Season 2, Episode 6, Chapter 14, I believe. That adds up, yep. And the title of this one, quite alarmingly, when I first started watching the episode, is The Tragedy. Um, so yeah, so we're going to go into spoilers. Um, so this is your warning, spoiler warning, if you haven't watched it yet. I don't know why you haven't if you're watching this, but yeah, big spoilers coming up. Um, yeah, so... The tragedy, which is quite ominous. I, I didn't like that when I saw it. And this episode is directed by Robert, Robert Rodriguez as well, um, which is pretty cool. He's, I, I like the the style with Mandalorian, where they have um, different directors for each episode. I know they use some of the same people, um, like Filoni and Favreau do a few episodes each. But, um, but yeah, I like that they have some real heavyweights as well, like Rodriguez doing it. And it's it gives each episode its own kind of style which are quite light. like this one was quite distinctively different to the one before it for example and this was a very short episode well, not short short but you know um one of the shorter length episodes kind of i think it's 33 minutes and i like that i like that when it's 30 to 40 minutes that works really well i think but it was pretty pretty action-packed but yeah um so we we joined mando and the child on their quest to um, the planet Tython, which is, I think is a real deep reference to one of the Old Republic games. Um, I'm not sure myself, but I know a lot of people said that. Um, and uh, I like the scene at the beginning with Mando um, saying the baby's name and just enjoying him respond to it, Grogu, and um, getting him to use his powers with the little silver ball thing which he has, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, the, the big thing from this episode, which they, they showed in the recap beforehand, the bit with Boba Fett rescuing, uh, what's her name? Um, I did write down Fennec on uh, Tatooine so you knew Boba Fett was going to make an appearance again this episode after we saw him come back um, in the first episode of this series and uh, yeah so we got to see Slave 1 again which is pretty cool that was quite a big moment definitely um, and see it coming in um, and you get the little meet in between those um, I, I, I really like um, Tamura Morrison as Boba Fett because obviously you know, he's literally the only person that could play him now unmasked sort of thing um, and the weird thing for me is that I um, when I most watched the original films, um, it was when uh, Jeremy Bullock played Boba Fett. I'm not sure if he did the voice, but it was the original voice of Boba Fett who didn't have the same accent that Tamara Morrison has, um, which is quite distinctive. And uh, so for me, when I hear Boba Fett talk with a different accent, it's kind of strange because I know after the prequels came out, they went back and they got Tamara Morrison to record the lines. So if you watch the most recent version, the original films, like on Disney Plus, for example, he'll have that same voice and that same accent. But I grew up with the special editions on VHS, which is where I watched them the most. And I watched them a lot when I was a kid um, so to me Boba Fett having a different voice is still a bit odd but you know not a, not a complaint but it was when he said um, let's have a chat and I thought I can't imagine Boba Fett saying let's have a chat and he said the line that uh, his father Django said in the prequels which is a bit a bit on the nose for me for like you know kind of him saying the exact same thing just so we all go ah there it is but you know it's it's all good it's for fans um, yeah I thought Boba Fett was really good in this and he's, he's a he's an odd character because he's always been the thing where um He's one of the coolest characters and he's got such a big cult following and he has done for so many years, but he does almost nothing in the original trilogy. He just kind of hangs around and then he gets killed really stupidly, um, or so we thought for many, many years. And they kind of expanded on him in the books and the comics and stuff like that. And then obviously we got more of his backstory in the prequels, which I was okay with. And I, I never really thought, I'm a big fan and a big believer in the less things are explained, the better they are. But, you know, you obviously want to have satisfaction in terms of the story. But with a character like Boba Fett, the fact that he was mysterious was what made him cool. And like when you kind of have too much of that, it's not quite as cool anymore. But you know, I'm I'm not complaining. Like you know, it was it was good to see him in this episode. But I would have been completely happy with just that. Like, I love the bit at the end of the first episode when you see Boba Fett and you figure out who it is. That that was perfection. And I would have been happy if they'd never elaborated on that. If he, he's just some weirdo on Tatooine now. But you know, obviously they had to, which is fine. But um, but yeah, you know, it was, and I, I liked him using the, which I think was the gaffy stick, like the Tuscan Raiders use, which we learned in the first episode of the series again was just a toothbrush for Banthers. But I like that whole thing, and it, you know, Rob Rodriguez is a very um, frenetic like, action style director in some cases, so like that, that's like that really suited him well. And obviously, Boba getting the armor back and putting that back on, that was the ultimate sort of fan service moment. Which again, I don't, I don't mind, but I probably didn't get as excited about it as a lot of people would have and you know that's fine that's just me um but i still i still enjoyed it and like i said before the thing about this show is that i'm perfectly happy with them just giving us new stuff just they introduced all these new characters like obviously mando himself and the child and like kara and um grief like uh, carl weather's character and i'm perfectly happy just 
just seeing them. And I like it when they get the little nods into the original one, which is cool. And I like it when they introduce Clone Wars and Rebel stuff, like the previous episode with Ahsoka. But then, like, I, I, I don't need to see any more of Ahsoka after last week. Like, that was good enough for me. And the same with Boba Fett. I don't need to see him anymore. Like, you know, it's I'm happy with that. But I know he's going to get his own series. But then at the same time, like I say, I'm not complaining. Um, I'm happy with whatever they give us. I think it's, it's a great show and I like it a lot. But I'm just saying that they don't need to do the older stuff for me to enjoy it. Like, I'm I'm happy with just new characters and new places and stuff like that. But, I mean, a, a, in a, a perfect combination of the two is great as well. So, um, but yeah, the... The last part of the episode was incredibly tense because obviously we saw Baby Yoda, the child Grogu, um, connecting with the Force in some manner, which was pretty cool. I like that. I like that they they kind of to start with it was sort of like is anything going to happen? And then you get the incredibly tense ending of um, like so you had the cool battle scene with the stormtroopers against you know the bounty hunters, the good guys kind of thing. And um, yeah, and then you just kind of <laughs> I knew because it was getting to the end of the episode, we weren't going to get a resolution. This episode, I knew it was going to be a bit of a cliffhanger where um, the child is in imperial custody. Um, but yeah, um, but, you know, and the dark troopers were cool. They looked exactly how they did in the rebels cartoon, which is cool. And I feel like you don't need to know anything about them to understand what they are. Like they're just you know they're they're badass uh, robot troopers so you know they're pretty cool um all they did really in this episode was come down and grab the baby and fly off again but i'm sure we'll see them do some more stuff um so yeah so it's good that you know um, most people I mean especially me absolutely loves the baby and grogu so anytime he's in danger there's a real emotional connection there so you know they, they've kind of got me there um and I did like how he seems to be more in tune with his powers now. So when you see him on the ship, he was just throwing those two stormtroopers around, which I thought was great. But obviously, you know, he's still a baby and he gets he gets tuckered out quite quickly when he uses his powers, which obviously Moff Gideon is uh, very aware of. But um, but yeah, so he's uh, that's, that's the only bit. Is, you know, it makes you quite tense that he he's now in uh, now in custody. But yeah, um, I, I I really like. Giancarlo Esposito, um, I like him, even though every character he plays now is just kind of the um, lighter version of Gus Fring, basically. And I absolutely love him as Gus Fring. That's one of my favourite characters in anything in Breaking Bad and especially Better Call Saul. Um, he's fantastic in both of them. And, like, you know, he's just kind of, I feel like he's probably just having fun on this one. Like, you know, he's just being a, a, a Star Wars villain, basically, and just kind of doing the lighter version of his more complex character. Um, and you've got the whole, you know, Darksaber thing. Um, obviously, the big one of the biggest things as well is the Razor Crest being blown up, which is quite huge because we've seen it been absolutely battered for most of the two series. But um, to see it actually get completely destroyed, I mean, that's I mean, that's it. It's done right. Um, and I like that the little silver ball survived because obviously it did. You knew it was going to. And the best car spear. Um, and I'm assuming that's because we're going to get some kind of battle between Mando and Moff Gideon, and Moff Gideon with the dark saber and. Mando with the Beskar spear because as they showed in the previous episode the lightsabers can't cut through Beskar um, which is you know a cool little thing that just adds a little element to it but yeah um, but yeah another another good episode another one that I enjoyed um, I think that's like I said I think other people enjoyed it a little bit more than me but you know that's just uh, my personal preference but I have no no problem with any of these like they'll, they'll, they, can, they can give me whatever they want and I'll enjoy it because I'm a fan so yeah so that's cool um, we've got two episodes left I'm looking forward to them um, and yeah, I'll keep doing these reviews. So please leave a like, please subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and thank you very much. See you soon.